Good morning. Welcome to our worship service. This is the first sermon of the year 2023. As we say goodbye to 2022, um, welcome the new year 2023. Uh, we are probably thinking about a lot of different things. Um, the Christmas season was just over. Probably your life or your house uh, was in chaos or in a mess and you're trying to fix it and trying to uh, put your house or your, your life uh, back in order. Uh, the vacation mode is over and uh, we're back to uh, uh, the so-called reality. And we should thank God uh, in our calendar, in our daily life pattern. There's always time and always uh, uh, opportunity for us to say goodbye to the old and welcome the new. And for us to transition from one period to another period. I think this is a God sent moment uh, for us to think about, you know, what our life should be and what our li- uh, where our life is heading to. Uh, in the new year, many of the people, including ourselves, are probably thinking about of some resolutions, right? Some New Year's resolution, probably losing weight. Any of you are thinking about this? Or quit some of the bad habit, going back to gym, uh, paying off some uh, debts or uh, saving more money, uh, building up a better or good habits. Uh, this kind of New Year's resolutions. And um, I keep thinking about this question. I'm sure you do as well. Uh, what, as questions, uh, should be thinking about in terms of uh, New Year's resolutions. Uh, as we transition from uh, one period to another period, uh, as we uh, say goodbye to the old and welcoming the, the new uh, year, uh, what kind of New Year's resolutions should we be thinking about as the people of God? So I have chosen a fairly familiar passage to share with you. Uh, to reflect upon uh, so that we know what Jesus uh, wants us to do. Uh, what kind of New Year's resolutions should we be uh, keeping in mind uh, at this time of the year? Uh, so as we welcome the new year, why don't we just read through this passage and see what we can take out of this passage, uh, what kind of lessons we can learn. Uh, here uh, is Matthew chapter 6. Now, Matthew chapter 6 is a familiar passage. It's actually the sort of the conclusion of Sermon on the Mount, the famous well-known sermon of Jesus uh, giving to his uh, disciples uh, while on earth, uh, teaching us what kingdom living is all about. So right at the end, almost the end of this uh, long sermon from Matthew chapter 5 uh, all the way to uh, uh, chapter 7, uh, we come to the end of chapter 6. 6 25, it says, Therefore I tell you, Jesus says, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not your life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow nor, 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 nor reap, nor gather into bonds, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one single hour or cupid to his span of life? So Jesus said, uh, Don't you worry about your essential needs, the money, uh, your bank account, your investment, all this earthly you know, concern that we have. Now, Jesus is not saying that we should be irresponsible. Uh, it's, it, that's not the teaching of the Bible. Jesus is saying uh, our mind and our heart should not be uh, so fixed upon things like these. He says, look at the birds of the air. The Father is feeding them. They don't work as hard as we do. Uh, They don't gather into barns, they don't harvest. Um, But the Heavenly Father is feeding them and, you know, keeping them alive. And he compares that to 
our lives and which of you by being anxious, just worrying, you know, working so hard, right, or overworking. Uh, how many of us can do this, uh, being anxious, can add one single hour to the span of our life? Now, the original word behind the word hour is cubit. Cubit is the arm length of the king, uh, most probably uh, Egyptian king, Pharaoh, uh, using his arm as uh, the standard of measurement uh, in, in, uh, in, in the ancient days. Uh, a cubit is an arm length. Um, uh, it's the smallest unit of measurement. Smallest unit of length. So Jesus is saying, by having anxiety, cannot add a single cubit, cannot add the most basic, the smallest unit to the span of life of ours. So he keeps on saying, why are you anxious about clothing, right? What we wear, the outward appearance, the outward things. He said, look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil or uh, spin. But I tell you, even King Solomon in all his glory was not to be compared to one of these, to the bird or the wild flowers, the lilies of the field. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive, tomorrow will be gone and flown into the uh, oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the Gentiles, those people who do not follow Jesus, do not know uh, God. They seek after all these things, all this eating, drinking, clothing. But your Heavenly Father knows what you need, that you need them all. But seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Now, therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Enough for the day, sufficient for the day, is its own trouble. Now, this is the uh, one unit, one of the units of the Sermon on the Mount, talking about uh, how the disciples should be living. What is disciple, the disciple of Christ should be seeking after all, uh, Jesus is comparing uh, some of the things that uh, the uh, those people who don't don't know Jesus, uh, what they're seeking, what they're going after, and compared to what a disciple of Christ should be seeking and pursuing. Um, I remember years ago, uh, I uh, left Israel uh, after my trip. Uh, it was about more than 10 years ago. I left Israel and I was waiting for uh, the flight in the Tel Aviv airport. So I was walking around in the hallway uh, of the, uh, the airport and then I bumped into uh, a map uh, outside of uh, the El Or Airlines. Now the El Or Airlines, as you can see here, uh, is the national uh, Israeli airline. And um, uh, it's one of the one of the most well known uh, airlines in the world. Um, so I went by the counter, um, and then I saw this map. You know, this map. I was pretty curious. Why is there a map like this uh, uh, by the counter of L O? Um, can you guess what this map is all about? What is this map? Now I have some options here. A intercontinental highway system. So these arrows are intercontinental Africa to Asia or Europe, uh, probably a highway system road map, or the airline uh, route map, or none of the above. Which one do you think this map is all about? 
Is it the highway system? Is it the wood map? Or is it none of the above? Now the answer is, it's none of the above. This is not uh, the highway system. This is not a map of the LO airline uh, wood map. And now what this is all about is actually routes or map of routes of the migratory uh, birds in Israel. Migratory birds, you know, they, as we know, they fly from south to north and north to south, depending on the season. When it is in, in the winter, uh, it's getting uh, so cold, uh, the birds will uh, migrate uh, down to uh, the warmer climate, right, in the continent of Africa. So this map is very interesting, uh, just right outside of our airline line back then, uh, uh, 10 years ago. It's not there anymore. So I took a picture. So I took, took this picture because as I saw this map, I immediately thought of Matthew 6, when Jesus said, do not worry about what you eat and what you drink. Um, look at the birds of the air. Check them out. You know, see how they fly. And I immediately thought of uh, this passage of the Sermon on the Mount because uh, Jesus was saying, uh, referring to the birds of the air. And, you know, this is not by accident that Jesus knew something about the geography of Israel. Because the birds are traveling north to south and south to north. They have to travel through the narrow strip of land of Israel Palestine. As you can see on the left or the west side of this long narrow strip is the Mediterranean Sea. And on the right is the desert of the uh, uh, Syrian uh, 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 Saudi Arabia uh, desert on the right or in the east. Now let me show you a map here. As you can see, this is the Google map. And uh, you can see Israel is right here. And this long, narrow corridor is the land bridge of all the continents, Africa, uh, Asia Minor and Europe, and Asia. Uh, this is the land bridge. And on the left is the huge uh, Eastern Mediterranean Sea. And then on the right is the Saudi Arabia or Syrian desert. So the birds had to travel through from uh, north to south or south to north, they have to fly through uh, the land of Israel. In fact, in uh, the land of Israel, just north of the Lake of uh, Galilee or Sea of Galilee, uh, here there's a small strip of flatland called Hula Valley. Uh, this Hula Valley uh, is famous for bird watching. Uh, in the end of the year, around the month of November or December, uh, bird-watching people would gather in this uh, Hula Valley north of Sea of Galilee in order to uh, just look at the birds, uh, look at all these beautiful migratory birds flying through uh, Israel. Uh, as you can see, these beautiful pictures of uh, birds and uh, migratory uh, uh, birds are flying through uh, the land of uh, Israel, uh, particularly through that uh, corridor of uh, Galilee. Uh, migratory bird flying through uh, Mount Hermon right here. Um, so Jesus was saying, pointing to the birds, and the disciples knew about this. It's about time of the year when the migratory birds will fly through this uh, strip of land, and they can see all sorts of different, different uh, birds and different um, um, big and small uh, flying creatures uh, going through the land. So they are not unfamiliar with all of this, you know, beautiful uh, birds and different uh, migratory pattern. Jesus was pointing to something that they could see and they could observe. And just ask them to open your eyes and see how the creatures of God, how the animals, how the birds, 
are being taken care of by the Heavenly Father. So compared to our own lives, we are so much more valuable than one of these sparrow or birds. And then he take another example from the field. So the first example was to uh, direct our eyes, our, direct our perspective toward the sky. See the migratory birds, right? They are being taken care of by the Heavenly Father, just like God will take care of you. And also, He direct the perspective on the field, on the land. So we look up, and then we look down, and we see all kinds of wild flower, the lilies of the field. Um, the wild flower growing in every single season, every single month. They have different color in every month. Uh, sometimes it's red, sometimes it's white, sometimes it's yellow, um, uh, sometimes it's like this beautiful purple. So he, he was saying to these disciples, saying to us, look at the wild flower growing almost by themselves because the Heavenly Father is taking care of them. Look at the flower, how glorious and how beautiful they are. Um, he said, compare the beauty of, of, the, of the wildflower in Galilee, and you will notice how beautiful they are. Compared to the time of Solomon, Remember Jesus said, um, you see the wildflower, the lilies of the field, how glorious they are. They are more beautiful, more glorious, more majestic than the time of Solomon. You know, in times of Solomon, um, the royal purple or the royal building were the glory. Now, if you know about something uh, if you know something about, uh, you know, purple dye, uh, the color purple is really hard to obtain, even these days. Uh, purple is the hardest uh, dye, the hardest color to obtain. Now, back in Jesus' day, uh, when people need to have the purple dye, they have to go to the Mediterranean Sea coast to gather the murex shells. And one of the, uh, take, take the shells and, and open it up. And you, 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 you harvest the, the gland, a very small part of the, uh, the murex. And then you gather all the glands and you can get some purple dye. Now, as you can see in this picture, you have to do that one by one in order to have purple, in order to have uh, the uh, most valuable most royal color uh, in Jesus' day. How many do we need in order to dye clothing into purple? Now, as you can see in this formula, you need 50, 54 kilogram of Merrick shelf. That is equal to 119 pounds of different, many Merrick shelves in order to produce only one gram of purple, one gram of the color. It's so hard to get, right? It's so valuable. But look at the lilies of the field. Look at the pictures. Look at the pictures how the purple flowers are just growing on the field. And God is taking care of them. God is clothing them with the best color on earth. You cannot compare the beauty of this wildflower, this purple flower, red flower, with all these different kinds of beautiful colors. Compare them to the time of King Solomon, what he was wearing, right? Uh, this flower is, is more beautiful than what Solomon has on, on his body. So don't you worry. Don't you work overwork so hard uh, in order to obtain one of these colors, right? One of these glories. Because you know that the Heavenly Father is taking care of you. 
Now, not only the purple color was such a valuable in Jesus' day, even the buildings, the royal buildings, the temple, um, they were the most magnificent buildings on earth in those days. Um, here I show you a picture of uh, a model of Jerusalem. Uh, the ratio is 1 to 50. Uh, you can see that in Israel Museum. Um, as you can see, this man here, um, you know, this model of Jerusalem is already, is very, 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 very big. And the scale is only 1 to 50. Now, as you can see, this model, it is a gigantic temple mount. It is a glorious golden building of the temple. Now, when people think of Solomon, they think of the most glorious period of uh, Israel's history. I remember I had a dinner with uh, some of the uh, classmates when I was studying in uh, Jerusalem, and we had the opportunity to sit down with uh, some of the most, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the best uh, Israeli uh, Jewish teachers um, in Jerusalem. So I remember one time uh, we were sitting down uh, around the table with one, one of the teachers that I really respect. Uh, he is an uh, Israeli Jewish teacher. And uh, we were, you know, chit-chatting and uh, talking about different things. And then one of the uh, classmates asked the teacher, the Jewish teacher, and if you had the opportunity, if you can travel back to the Old Testament time or the history of Israel, which period would, would you choose in order to, in order to witness uh, the glory or what happened uh, in those days? And without even thinking, uh, he responded by saying, I would want to travel back to the time of King Solomon when he dedicated the temple, when the glory of God fills the temple and people cannot even enter. You know, that sort of glorious day, the good old days, was the time of King Solomon. But what was Jesus saying? Jesus was saying, even when you consider the most glorious, magnificent building, magnificent period of your history, this cannot be compared to the lilies of the field. How the Father has clothed the field with all sorts of different valuable colors. You cannot compare them to one of these. One of these purple flowers or different kinds. They grow by themselves because the Heavenly Father is taking care of them. Now, the take home for us, as Jesus said, is that do, do not be overly anxious about um, what we eat and what we drink. Or housing, right? What kind of house do we have? Or what kind of uh, house do we buy? Or what kind of car do we drive? Uh, again, it's not... Uh, suggesting uh, in any way that we should live irresponsibly, right? We should be good stewards of all the resources God has given to us. But Jesus is saying, do not be overly anxious. Do not, do not be just overly uh, worrying. Uh, work just so hard on where you live, um, what, you, what you wear, and how you look. God is taking care of you. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things, you know, what we eat and what we drink, where we stay, will be added to you. Seek first the kingdom of God. I think a better translation would be pursue the kingdom of God. Run after first the kingdom of God. Be concerned about uh, the, 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 the name of God. Making God's name famous, is, it should be our first and foremost concern. And His righteousness, all the things that the Word of God is teaching us to do. Be concerned and pursue above all the righteousness of God, what God requires us to do. 
And then all these things will be provided for you. The priority of our lives, as we say goodbye to the old time, 2022, and welcome a new year, 2023, let us be reminded, seek first, run after, be the first and foremost uh, concern and our desire to glorify God, to serve Him. So talking about New Year's resolutions, how do you fill in the blanks? How do you fill in the blanks? What are those things that we should first seek after and desire most? Let me suggest to you five of them before considering any other things. First, live in the Word of God. Read the Word of God, you know, meditate on it, reflect upon it, so that the Word of God can fill our lives and inform our living. That is the first and foremost thing we can do and we have to do as disciples of Christ. When the Word of God is filling your lives, your priority is, is correct. And your, your priority of lives, you know what is your uh, foremost concern and desire. Then everything else will be uh, uh, configured, for, configured correctly. Live in the Word of God. Read the Word of God daily, every single day. Med meditate upon it. I'm not saying you have to read the Word of God 24-7. I'm saying that should be our consistent pattern of thought. Think about what the, uh, the Bible says, how we should make any decision, how we can please God. These are all coming from Scripture. So we have to live in the Word. And then secondly, I suggest that we have to pray daily. Pray for ourselves and most formally, and uh, pray for others. Uh, not just be concerned about our own needs and most of the time our own wants. You know, those are really insignificant compared to the eternal kingdom of God. Pray daily for other people, those who are in need around us. Pray for them and care for them. And third, worship wholeheartedly. Worship God with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our strength. You know, we worship God because whenever we worship, uh, we are reminded who is really the king. Who is really the leader of our lives, not ourselves, God Himself. And we can reset our priority on a weekly basis. That's why we insist on church not closing, right? Not be so concerned about, you know, what's, what kind of uh, pandemic out there and uh, disease out there. A church should be operating every single week. We worship God every single week. Right? Wholeheartedly. Fourth, build up the family of the church, the family of God. Um, the, the, the New Testament and the Old Testament uh, regularly, consistently reminds us uh, our, our number one concern uh, to live socially is to build up the family of God. Use our gifts, use our talents to build up the church to plan a church, uh, to uh, strengthen our church. Go to a fellowship and pray, for, pray with other uh, believers. Uh, let other believers encourage you and let your presence be an encouragement to other people. Build up the family of the church. Fifth, practice stewardship, faithful stewardship. The Bible tells us use our time faithfully to serve God. Use our talent to serve God. Use our treasure, our money, our offering to build up the ministry for the glory of God. So seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Let this be our priority. Let, let us reset our, our list of things that we want to do, our list of our resolutions so that we can glorify God together. Let us all pray together. Father, we want to give you thanks for a time of renewal. Uh, as we say goodbye to year 2023 and welcome a new year, um, let this be a reminder 
to all of us to reset our priority, to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And let us not be too concerned and overly anxious about uh, the essential things because we know that you will take care of us and help us to serve you, to worship you wholeheartedly. Help us to live faithfully according to your word. In Christ's name pray.